Hello friends, this video on Biotechnology Principles Part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the next important thing that happens is that our DNA formation, that is how recombinant DNA will be formed. Okay. So now cut piece DNA and vector DNA combine to form our DNA. So this is something which we already know. So now you can understand that the where is the role of restriction endonuclease. Now restriction endonuclease helps to cut a portion of the plasmid DNA or vector DNA whatever you call so that some space is created for this cut piece DNA to join with this. So the restriction endonuclease or DNA caesar plays a role with the in cutting the vector DNA. It also plays is a role in cutting the desired DNA that is the foreign DNA. So in cutting both of them restriction endonuclease help. Now the same enzyme is used to cut both the foreign DNA as well as the vector DNA. Now why do we want that the same enzyme should cut both of them? Because as I have mentioned before also that each enzyme has a specific recognition sequence. Now if eco RI cuts both of both of them, in that case what will happen? The sticky ends which are formed in case of both of them that they will be complementary to each other. Only then they can join with each other. Right? But if let us suppose that if uh, the plasmid DNA is being cut by BAM H1 and if this one is being cut by eco RI then the DNA pieces which will be formed they will not be complementary to each other. So they will not be able to combine with each other but we want these two parts to combine with each other and that is possible only when the sticky ends here and the sticky end here both of them are complementary to each other and that is possible only when the same endonuclease enzyme cuts both of them. So when the same endonuclease enzyme cuts both of them then similar sticky ends will be there. Now when the sticky ends are complementary they tend to join together. So something of this sort. So let us try to understand looking at this example. So let us suppose this is the vector DNA. So in the vector DNA which is the recognition sequence for eco -RI. So we have taken the example of eco -RI. Now we know that eco -RI recognition sequence is GAATTC. So this is the recognition sequence for eco -RI. Again this is the foreign DNA that is foreign DNA is nothing but our desired DNA. So here also we need it, this to be cut. So here also eco -RI finds its recognition sequence. Now once the eco -RI finds its recognition sequence, it will cut between G and A here, here also G and A, here also G and A and here also G and A. So these are the places where it will cut it. So what will be formed? So the one piece will be G, C, T, T, A, A, G. The other piece would be A, A, T, T, C, G. So these are the two pieces that will be formed here. So only one piece is shown here. Similarly here also this will be one piece and this will be another piece. So the just the upper piece is shown here. The other piece is not shown here. So you see here since eco RI has cut both of them therefore this part and this part are complementary to each other because eco RI will always cut the same recognition sequence. Right. So now if you see that this part of the DNA and this part of the DNA they are complementary to each other that is this sticky end and this sticky end are complementary so when they are complementary they tend to combine together and when they combine together then what do we get we get a recombinant DNA and the same thing happens here so that is why it is very important that the same enzyme is used to cut both the foreign DNA as well as the vector DNA so that complementary sticky ends can be formed. So what are the steps which are involved in recombinant DNA formation first of all eco RI recognition sequence is recognized so first of all eco RI will have to find its recognition sequence so when it, once it finds the sequence it will cut between bases G and A on both the strands so as you can see here it has cut between G and A here between G and A here again between G and A here and between G and A here so as a result sticky ends will be formed and these sticky ends will combine together because they are complementary though so they feel like combining and how are they stuck together so the glue is used and the glue here is the DNA ligase so DNA ligase will actually help in sticking the two sticky ends together so that 
So that is the role of DNA ligase. So this is how our DNA formation take place. So let us quickly have a recap of the re our DNA technology. Now what is our DNA technology? Nothing but genetic engineering. So based on whatever we have studied so far, what did we see? For the formation of recombinant DNA, we need two DNA. One is the plasmid DNA or which will act as the vector. So this is basically the plasmid DNA, which is nothing but a circular DNA. And what is this? This is nothing but the foreign DNA. So from this DNA, we want to take the gene of our interest, that is the desired gene. So we will cut only that part of DNA which contains our desired gene. So that is the agenda, right? So both of these are the basic requirement for the formation of recombinant DNA. So what happens? So from this plasmid DNA comes this portion of DNA from this foreign DNA comes this part of DNA and then both of these are cut by the enzyme ECORI as a result sticky ends are formed and, and, and then the sticky ends join together and DNA ligase helps in gluing the two of them together. So DNA ligase plays an important role here. Now once this RDNA is formed, this is how it looks like. So now you have a circular DNA that is the plasmid DNA but it has some portion of the foreign DNA and this foreign DNA, this part contains the gene of interest. So when you, so this is the RDNA. So now it has both the capabilities. It has the gene of interest so one thing is that it has the gene of interest or the desired gene and the second thing is that it is capable of replicating inside the host organism. So it is capable of replication inside host organism and these are the two characteristics which we wanted in the recombinant DNA and that is why the entire concept of the recombinant DNA formation took place. So one very important thing that you should always remember when we talk about recombinant DNA technology is that the same enzyme should cut the vector DNA as well as the foreign DNA. I think I have repeated this before also but this is extremely important. That's because only when the same enzyme cuts both of them, you will be able to get sticky ends which are complementary to each other so that the sticky ends actually feel like sticking to each other. So that's about the RDNA technology. Now the question is, we saw here that the enzyme, that is the restriction endonuclease enzymes, which here is ECOR1. So this enzyme cuts the DNA into fragments. Now the question is, when it cuts the DNA into fragments, on what basis does it cut the DNA? It cuts on the basis of the recognition sequence so wherever it could find the recognition sequence it will cut the dna but how do we select from those fragments of dna that which fragments are required for the formation of recombinant dna because not all the fragments will be required right only just one fragment will be required which will combine with the plasmid dna to form recombinant dna so how do we select from so many fragments so there comes a different technique called electrophoresis which helps us to select from so many DNA fragments. Thank you. Please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.